Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you some of my math books. All right, let's jump into it and get started right away. So the first book I want to show you is probably the first math book I ever reviewed here on my YouTube channel. It's Calculus by Michael Spivak and this is the third edition and I'm pretty sure there is a fourth edition available now. The contents of this book are a little bit different from other books. It's basically broken up into parts and within each part you have chapters. So for example, part one is the prologue and you have two chapters. Part two is the foundations and you've got some more chapters there. Part three is derivatives and integrals and you see you have more chapters there as well. Here's some more of the chapters on derivatives and integrals and then it goes into part four which is infinite sequences and infinite series. So you have more chapters and then there's an epilogue and then some more chapters there. Notice it says answers to selected problems. So it does contain answers to some of the problems. There is actually a solutions manual that you can buy for this book that will have answers to the other problems. And I will leave a link to all of these books, including the solutions manual in the description of this video. Chapter one is on basic properties of numbers and note that in each part at the beginning, there's a cool little quote. To be conscious that you are ignorant is a great step to knowledge. Here's another one. There was a most ingenious architect who had contrived a new method for building houses by beginning at the roof and working downwards to the foundation, Jonathan Swift. The book itself reads incredibly well and it is considered a classic. I honestly think that anyone who is interested in math should own some edition of Michael Spivak's Calculus. The biggest downside of the book is the cost. Even used, it's going to cost some money. I actually bought my copy brand new several years ago. I bought this after I took Calculus 1, 2, and 3, and I read a lot of it, and I did struggle with it. It was only after I had a proof writing course that I really felt that I gained a lot from this book. This book is notorious for having challenging exercises. You can see here some of the exercises on the chapter on trigonometric functions. And the really hard exercises have a star next to them. Here's an example of a problem that has a star. It is an excellent test of intuition to predict the value of the limit as lambda approaches infinity of the definite integral from a to b of f of x times the sine of lambda x with respect to x. And then Spivak guides you through the process by giving you the steps in order to do the problem. Overall, I think this is an excellent book. I first heard about this book from one of my old online friends who was a Canadian math major, and he actually used this book to take an honors class in calculus. This next book is completely different, and I wanted to switch gears totally by introducing it now because this is a book that anyone can buy and read. It's by Oscar Fernandez and it's called Everyday Calculus, Discovering the Hidden Math All Around Us. Everyday Calculus, Discovering the Hidden Math All Around Us, Oscar E. Fernandez. Here are the contents and you can see this is the kind of book that you can basically lay in bed and read. It's a really well-written book and I think it'll give you a lot of knowledge that you didn't have before you read it. I'm a big fan of this book and I'm still reading it. I haven't gotten to the later chapters yet, but here is a look at what you can expect. Here he talks about why we survive rainy days. This book is filled with real life applications of calculus, and it's not like you're doing word problems because Oscar explains everything in a really good way. So it's actually way more interesting to read this book than it is to actually solve word problems. This next book is a fun little book on sets, sequences, and mappings. And this is a Dover book, which means it's very, very affordable and it's a well-made paperback. These are the contents. It starts with introduction to sets and mappings, sequences, and you notice there's a typo there. It says uniformly, that should say uniformly. And then three is countable, connected, open, and closed sets. Now I have a theory about the typo. I think there's a reason they didn't correct it. I'm pretty sure that if you reprint an old book, you're not allowed to change anything. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I feel like I read that somewhere on the internet. If someone knows, maybe they can confirm, but it just seems like a really obvious typo. And so this being a reprint of an older book, it's shocking that it wasn't fixed. Then it talks about convergence, continuity, and uniform continuity. 
and then metric spaces. These are topics that you would see as an undergrad if you took an advanced calculus course. This book reads quite well and it's a little bit different from the modern books because it is an older book. However, it does not have answers to any of the exercises in the back of the book. The proofs themselves are extremely well written and I think this is a book worth picking up, especially because it's a Dover book. It's a paperback so you can lay in bed and read it and I like it. For some reason, whenever I lay in bed and read, I have a hard time reading hardcovers. I'm worried like they're gonna fall apart or something, but paperbacks, I tend to be a little bit more rough with them. Yeah, it's a nice Dover book. Just gotta give it a whiff. Ugh. This next book is extremely good, but I am extremely disappointed in my copy. So this is Abstract Algebra by Dummett and Foote. And this is a book that could be used for a graduate course in Abstract Algebra. This is the second edition, and I'm pretty sure there is a newer edition out now. My copy is falling apart, and I paid quite a bit of money for it. This book is not super inexpensive. You can't even find used copies at a good price. It's going to cost some money. However, it's still worth picking up. I think the explanations in this book are incredible, and this book has tons of exercises. Here are some of the exercises on the introductory section on rings. So we have five problems here. And then look at this, look at all of these problems you have. And again, it's missing solutions, which is a real con, but the fact you have so many practice problems that you can at least try to do is really nice for a book like this. This book has an incredible index. That's right, index. I have used this book as a reference extensively while in graduate school, and you'll be able to find topics in this book that you won't find in other books. For example, I remember looking for certain things in Michael Arton's algebra book, which is also considered possibly a graduate level algebra book, and looking in the index and not finding them, but dumb it in foot, it just works so much better as a reference. Let's quickly go through the contents so you can see how much this book actually covers. So it starts with group theory, then look at all of those topics, and then subgroups. Let me turn the page so you can see the rest. Quotient groups and homomorphisms. Group actions, it does a really good job here with group actions. This is a topic that's often omitted in undergraduate books. Direct and semi-direct products. Again, excellent exposition here, really nice examples. And then some more topics in group theory. Then it talks about ring theory, starting from the very basics. Euclidean domains, PIDs, those are principal ideal domains, and UFDs, those are unique factorization domains. Polynomial rings. And then it talks about modules and vector spaces, field theory, Galois theory, and then it talks about more advanced topics here, commutative rings and algebraic geometry, including Noetherian rings, Artinian rings, homological algebra, and then representation theory and finite groups. I have nothing negative to say about this book other than the quality of the book itself. I am really shocked that my copy is falling apart and I really want to buy another copy, but it's still kind of hard to find an affordable copy. And I'm wondering what if it just happens again? In any case, it's a book worth having because it covers so much material. This last book I'm pretty sure is out of print and I really like it. It's called A First Course in Abstract Algebra. I have had this book for a very long time. It was written by Hiram Pillay and Paul M. Weichel. This is not a perfect book and we'll talk about why in a minute, but first let's go through the contents. So it talks about set theory, then number theory. Quite a bit of number theory at the beginning of this book. Composition of functions and permutations. So it does the cycle multiplication backwards. So it doesn't do it right to left, which I think is a little bit weird. The theory of groups, the theory of rings, quite a bit there. Then some more specific topics in the theory of groups and then even more specific topics in the theory of rings. They even prove Wedderburn's theorem, which is not something that you see in every book. So the cons of this book are that there are no solutions to the exercises and some of the notation is a little bit outdated and also I don't like how they do the cycle multiplication. However, those things are pretty small. It's a really good readable book. I spent some time reading this book and I like it and I just have to smell it because it smells 
so good. Another pro of this book is probably the price because it's out of print and it's not a very popular book, so you should be able to find it fairly affordable. I'll try to find it and leave a link in the description before I post this video. So those are five books that I just wanted to show you in this video. This one is really cool because it's really affordable and it's a well-made paperback and it's gonna have topics that you'll see as a math major if you take advanced calculus. So I think this is a good book for that reason. This one here is really fun to read if you like reading and you want something that you can read just for fun that gives you lots of real life applications of calculus. I think this is a great book for that. This one is cool if you can find it affordably. Again, I'll try to leave links in the description. I think I paid less than $10 for this book, but I bought this book a very long time ago. I've been collecting math books for years, and I'm pretty sure this one's out of print, but I'll try to find it. This one's great, but it does cost some money, but it's got so much info in it. And if you're doing like more advanced abstract algebra, you're gonna find topics in here you won't find in undergraduate books. So great textbook. My only con is the quality of this particular copy. I don't know if other editions have the same issue. And lastly is The Legendary Calculus by Michael Spivak. This is a great book. And again, the only con is the price. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.